The School of Mines has its M, CSU an A for the Aggies, and even Western State has its W. So why doesn't CU have its own letter? It turns out it once did, but you have to look back to the late 1940s to find proof. From 1947 to 1980, the third flat iron had CU painted on it. However, it was done illegally. Students would go up in the dark of night and paint the letters. And each time, the city would respond with a removal team and a fine for the students, anywhere from $50 to $300. Back then, and even today, there are still those who say the school's letters have no place on the flat irons. I think it, it doesn't go with the beauty of the area. It, to me, it's graffiti. I don't like looking at that. The three other schools in the state use their letters as a source of school pride. I mean, that's kind of cool, but maybe we could do it in an eco-friendly way. Students shouldn't get any ideas. According to the CU police, depending on the damage, students could be charged with a felony and up to $15,000 in fines. It wasn't just CU students that defaced the third flat iron. More than 40 years ago, a Sooners fan turned the C into an O for that weekend's football game against Oklahoma. And in 1964, the CU was turned into a DU, although the University of Denver never fessed up to it. Sandblasting the letters would cause more damage to the rock. So in the 1980s, the city of Boulder and the university teamed with McGuckin's hardware to cover the letters with 15 gallons of paint, blending them with the rock. But if you look past the iconic tiled roofs of campus, you might see the faint hint of CU on the rocks above Boulder. Rebecca Sunshine, News Team Boulder.